as we celebrate the memorial of the beheading of St. John the Baptist, certainly this tragic story that we have heard reminds us of the danger of a dead conscience or a conscience that could still be alive. But if we do not handle it well, it will become dead. Indeed, what is confronting the world today is the fact that the world has lost its conscience. That is why in our time, humanity no longer is able to distinguish between right and wrong. Humanity, because of moral relativism, individualism, have, in the name of freedom, in the name of human rights, have forgotten that it is important that all of us have a responsibility, not just towards ourselves, but towards other people as well. It is not just about our own individual rights, it is about our common rights. And so, because of uh, self-centeredness, because we, the world has become desensitized to their conscience, and so the world is plagued with a dead conscience. And yet, in such a situation, the church cannot stop proclaiming the truth, even if the world does not want to hear. And this certainly was the case of Prophet Jeremiah and St. John the Baptist. Prophet Jeremiah was called to address his people and to urge them to conversion of heart. And yet the Lord also told Jeremiah that this task would be an unenviable task because his mission, the Lord told him, would end in failure. And yet, all the more, and all the same, Jeremiah was asked to proclaim the truth to a people that would not be listening to him. And this is important because uh, the people certainly will not respond. And even that, not just they will not hear the call to repentance, um, more importantly, um, even his own people, his own relatives and friends, uh, abandon Jeremiah. And it is really a very lonely task. A prophet is always very lonely because he has to stand up alone. And this was because uh, what he said was not uh, pleasant to the ears of the people, the nobles, the officials, and the king, as he was predicting that if the people did not repent, then they would be under the control of Babylon, the foreign power. And this was certainly too much for the people. They felt that he was a secret agent of Babylon, trying to demoralize the people into submitting to Babylon. But the truth was that if they did not submit, the kingdom would be utterly destroyed. At least if they gave in to Babylon, they would only be made a vast vassal state. At least they would have some autonomy. But the people did not listen. And so indeed, uh, what Jeremiah said would come true. And uh, Babylon would, over, would overthrow the kingdom of the David. And at the same time, God assured him that he would be protected. Indeed, Jeremiah's life was protected. Uh, eventually, of course, he was also sent to Egypt with the rest. But uh, we are not too clear exactly uh, what was the outcome. But at least in uh, Judah, his life was protected from his enemies, by the king himself, actually. And so, we ask ourselves, why then did the Lord told him, brace yourself for action, stand up and tell them all I command you. Don't be dismayed at their presence, or in their presence I will make you dismayed. I think it is important for us that sometimes even when people do not hear what we say, even the world is against us, we will still need to speak the truth, both for our sake and for the sake of all those people who have not yet arrived at the dead conscience. So long as the conscience is still sensitive, there is always hope for conversion. So if we do not speak out the truth, then eventually our conscience would also be dead. And all those people whose conscience could still be a bit sensitive, they still could hear the word of God. And unless we say the truth and speak the truth, these people would not be changed. Or at least have a hope to hear the word of God. That is why in the case of John the Baptist, he too had to suffer the same fate. Of course, John the Baptist, he was like Jeremiah, a man who was fierceless, a man who was true to himself. 
like Jeremiah, he lived an austere life. He lived in the desert. He was surviving on very uh, limited food, honey. John the Baptist, he was living a very um, honest life. He was true to himself. He was hearing the word of God. And he had no qualms about speaking the truth, calling out Herod and Herodias, being the leaders of the country for committing adultery. He has no fear of men. He only feared God. And John the Baptist, we are told, he was ready to stand up for the truth, even at the expense of his own life. And of course, in today's story, we are told how he was eventually uh, beheaded because of his firm stand against injustice, against immorality. And this all happened because uh, he was not afraid of Herod and Herodias. And so we are told in today's um, gospel, we, it's good for us to examine the three set of characters. We, we have Herodias. She was really having a dead conscience. She was so, his, her anger consumed her. Her greed, her lust consumed her. And so she was not able to hear the word of God anymore. Uh, actually, the story that is told by the evangelist, this story is uh, parallel to the story of Queen Zezebel and King Ahab. We read in the book of Kings, where this queen was equally as evil as Herodias. And Herodias was also uh, had influence over King Herod, just as Zezebel over King Ahab. And we know that the story of Queen Zezebel, she was the one who manipulated the situation, the political situation, manipulated the story of uh, the vineyard, how this uh, vineyard was being taken over by her, by planning, by plotting. And he was, she was an evil man, evil woman that influenced the king wrongly. And the king, Ahab, exactly parallel to King Herod, both were weakling. They did not have a firm stand on their own. They were temperamental. And this is true huh, in the life of King Herod. And so the situation came when Herodias uh, used her daughter to tempt um, and to lead King Herod to take revenge on her behalf. And so uh, Herodias' daughter danced uh, before uh, King Herod in such a lustful way, and the king was delighted. This was a stepdaughter, of course. And so the, the king was taken uh, by his, first and foremost, his pride, his ego, and uh, he gave, he made a promise uh, because his conscience was actually a weak. He made a promise to uh, Herodias' daughter, ask whatever you want, I will give you until half of my kingdom. The kind of pride, the kind of ego, when carried away, of course, by wine, by drinking. And most of all, because of his uh, lack of consciousness of his decision, he succumbed to the threat of Herodias. Actually, King Herod, he had a good conscience. We are told that before that, and that was the reason why King Herod, he still actually could have been saved. But he didn't attend to his conscience. We are told that Herod was afraid of John. He knew him to be a good and holy man, he even gave him protection. And that is why Herodias became even more angry. But whenever he heard John the Baptist spoke, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. It is actually a positive uh, appraiser of King Herod, that he was really struggling within himself. The conscience of doing what is right and knowing what is wrong, what should not be done. And this is true for all of us too. We struggle with our conscience. We struggle with the right thing that we should do. And because of this temptation, because we are weak. And that can be understood. But what was the mistake of uh, King Herod? Although he heard the preaching of John the Baptist, he did nothing about it. And I think this is true. That is why even for us, uh, it's good for us as we reflect on uh, the behaving of John the Baptist, how do we regard our conscience? Uh, is it just enough to attend church services, to read the gospel, and to read the word of God, even if we do that? And yet, the conscience remains untouched. And we are not taking actions to try to put the word of God into practice in our life. A conscience that is weak, that is all of us, that is understood. We can appreciate it. We all have weak consciences. 
But when we do nothing with it, a day will come when we will become like King Herod, when our conscience becomes dead. Actually, after the death of John the Baptist, the conscience of King Herod, King Herod really became dead. Because when that time came, uh, near the death of Jesus, King Herod was no longer uh, sensitive to uh, his conscience. Before that, he was still worried about what Jesus, could Jesus be the one that he put to death, thinking that he was John the Baptist. But when the trial came, we are told that King Herod asked for Jesus to be brought to trial, expecting Jesus to amuse him with some of his miracles. He was no longer feeling the sacredness of God. And so we too, if we do not handle our conscience well, if we do not try to uh, sensitize ourselves to our conscience, a time will come when our conscience will be dead from, uh, from the question of guilt, it becomes indifference. From indifference, it becomes hostility. That is how people develop. People develop because they have a weak conscience. They fall into sin. They don't handle it. And so it becomes weaker and weaker. Until the day when it comes, it becomes numb to sins. When they are numb to sins, that time when we talk against sin, they will become hostile. They will attack us. They will attack the church. So we, that is why the church tells us, you know, even venial sins, huh, we need to pay attention. We cannot just take the sins, even venial sins, lightly, because they will become serious sin and then eventually more to sin. And that is the case of King Herod. Let me say one more person, and that is Herod's daughter, a person who has no conscience, can't even decide. She has no stand. She just accepted whatever the mother asked. She did not even form her conscience. Her conscience was never formed. And that is equally bad that a person like Herodias' daughter who cannot take a stand on her own of what is right and what is good. And so, again, coming back to the question, the environment is also important. I suppose it was the environment that her daughter was brought up. So the kind of environment that we create for our family, in society, and even among us will help us to either sensitize our conscience or desensitize. And that is why we have to be very careful uh, of the influence of the community. There are some of us who are weak. We can influence those, and those of us who are weak, if we are not careful, your bad examples will also influence those who are not so strong, not so weak. Because birds of a feather flock together. You have a responsibility to ask yourself, are you an inspiration? Are you a good model to others? Or are you actually leading them away from God? leading away from living the gospel life. So even among ourselves, we have a grave responsibility towards each other. Otherwise, we will become Herodias or King Herod or Herodias' daughter. And this is true. That is why even in our family, who we are today is very much influenced by the values of our parents and of our elders.